Welcome to Inside Kern. I'm your host, Katie Price. Inside Kern's goal is to humanize county government and give you an idea of the types of services that your taxes provide. In this episode, you'll see how horses and one man can make a difference in the lives of our youth and how a little airport in the desert fuels the dreams of space travel for students in eastern Kern County. But first, with gas prices soaring and food prices spiking, have you ever wondered how you know if you're getting your money's worth? Is that gallon of gas really a gallon? Or that pound of turkey really a pound? Well, Kern County has a department that's objective is to ensure that your local pump and scale gives you everything you paid for. The mission of Weights and Measures is to provide equity and fairness in the marketplace. Every transaction involves some form of weights or measures in almost everything, every product of goods that people purchase. We have over 26,000 uh, devices that are under our jurisdiction in Kern County. So it is, we consider a very important job that we do. Well, Aaron is a journeyman uh, weights and measures inspector, and he's assigned a district, and part of that, he's, he's, a, he's responsible for all the weighing and measuring devices in his area. Plus, he has a specialty, which is heavy capacity. One of his tasks we'll be to today will be actually inspecting a vehicle scale or a truck scale. to serve and protect the public um, and you know finding we deal with complaints a lot you know, people call in and will tell us hey especially now with high gas prices people we're getting a lot of calls from people that they feel that they got cheated at a station and um, we go out and we'll investigate it either undercover or we'll go out and uh, ask the station to allow us to check a pump. Okay. Hi. Hi. Aaron Bowman. I'm with Kern County Weights and Measures. Hi, Aaron. I'm going to be testing the pumps today for the county. Okay. And it's just going to be our annual test, testing five gallons at each pump. Okay. So I just need for the clerk to do the resets. Do the resets? Okay. After I've talk to the clerk inside about the resets. I'll come out, level up the approvers, make sure that uh, the bubble on top is within the ring, and then um, select a grade and pump it into the appropriate approver. Um, get as close to five gallons on the pump as possible, and then read the uh, liquid level and make sure that it's within six cubic inches. If it's within, within six cubic inches, I'll uh, fill out a sticker and uh, place that sticker on the pump. make sure that people uh, get what they pay for out there and they have confidence that when they go out there and they buy a gallon of gas, not only do they are getting an accurate gallon of gas, but they're also getting quality. I enjoy being out in the public, being outdoors. Uh, I have an area that I'm in charge of. Northeast Bakersfield and then North County cities, Delano, McFarland, Shafter, Wasco, and Oildale. And I enjoy 
you know, conversing with people at the different locations that I go to, whether it's a gas station or a store. Uh, we're going to go into the market and do an inspection of the scales. We'll go in and announce ourselves to the store manager and let him know what we're there for. How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing today? Good. Glad to see you. Good to see you. I guess I'm here and Steve's not, so he'll okay. be back after lunch. But, uh, okay. So anything you guys need? Yeah, we're just going to be. I'm just going to be checking the scales. Okay. Normal. Temp, Normal routine. Leaving, okay. Leaving my car. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. And uh, if you've got any questions okay. or if I find anything, I'll come and let you know. Okay. Sounds okay. good. If uh, you don't see me around, just have them call me up front. Okay. Right, for Chris. Okay. I'll start up front with the registers, just kind of work around customers. And then okay. maybe uh, if it's not too heavy, I can just test where the where the clerks are. Okay. If, there's, you okay. Know, if I'm not keeping anybody waiting. Okay. If you need anything at all, just holler. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. We're looking to make sure that the scale uh, obviously reads zero before we test, uh, and then we'll build up the weight to uh, most of these scales have a 30 pound capacity. So we'll build it up to 30 pounds and check to make sure it's within the tolerance. So it's two divisions at 30, and that's within that's within our tolerance. Okay, I'm gonna pull the weight off now because I want to see a zero indication on the display. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. Oh, see we didn't get it. So that's that's a problem. So what I'll do in this instance is I'll place this scale out of service and they'll have to have a serviceman come out and uh, take a look at it. Okay, all done with the inspection. Just wanted to go over the results with you. Uh, I checked all the register scales. Mm -hmm. I just had a problem with lane number two. It wasn't returning to zero properly. Okay. So if you could get that, I noted that in the certificate of inspection. Okay. If you could get that looked at, and they'll call me back, I'll come back okay. out and check it out. We'll get it checked out. Great. Okay. I just need just need a signature from you right here. Okay. And we give you 30 days, okay. 30 days in which to get that uh, repaired. There you go. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Have, Have a good day. You too. We do unannounced visits uh, because what we want to do is we want to check the devices that are being used there as they're being used on a day-to-day -day basis. So basically we go out there unannounced and we, we test and we put a, our seal on it, our, our seal that says this meets uh, our specifications on it, then people have assurance and confidence that that, that device that they're being used is accurate at that given time because we check it at a random notice. We're going to be taking uh, some aluminum cans to a recycler and we're going to try and do it undercover. I'll park my vehicle a distance away uh, from the uh, recycler and then I'll walk up and I'll redeem the cans just like any, any customer would. the bag up just like a normal customer, hand them to the clerk, he'll empty them into a, uh, a can 
probably sort through them looking for uh, any debris or anything that's not aluminum. Then he'll, they'll weigh it and um, then figure out uh, how much we receive uh, based on the, pound, the price per pound. Seven pounds? How much is aluminum right now? About six. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. They'll give us the money and we'll leave. It weighed exactly what we brought in. We brought in seven pounds, and they they credited us for seven pounds. The the price that they gave us was a dollar fifty six a pound, and they gave us ten dollars and ninety two cents for the seven pounds. I figured redid their math, and it all it all computes, and it's, they were right on. Well, really, if Waste and Measures wasn't here, there'd be anarchy in the marketplace. Just every civilized country in the world has some form of Waste and Measures, regardless of whether a third world country or not. Waste and Measures is a vital part of, of that society. So without that, you do have chaos in the marketplace. I really like Waste and Measures. I like having my own area and being in charge of the station and uh, the scales in my area. I really enjoy the people that I work with. We get along real well. Um, I have a good boss. So it, that, uh, that's what's kept me here. And I obviously know what I'm doing now in Weights and Measures. And I, I enjoy it. For more information on Weights and Measures, you can visit them at www.co.kern.ca.us backslash weights. Kern County is rich in volunteers. There are lots of people dedicated to curing cancer, heart disease, and making Bakersfield a better place to live. One such person is Meredith Hendricks. He spent countless years helping children through a program that teaches them citizenship, leadership, and life skills. That program is 4-H. Meredith has left an imprint on families and children for years through a mutual love, the love of horses. You know, I got involved with 4-H back in 1978. And my oldest daughter at the time thought, she, and she was like five or six years of age, she thought she wanted to ride horses. And so we went out and took some lessons and, and rode some horses and, and she got more and more involved in it. And uh, we just kind of took off from there. Probably about two years after we started doing that, we got involved with 4-H. There's a social a aspect to this, more, more than just, just the kids and, and teaching the kids about animals and how to take care of animals. And uh, unlike some of the livestock projects, which you, you teach kids how to raise animals, and sell animals and make money. The horses we don't do that with, of course, so it's a different type of project where you're taking care of the horse and you're still keeping, you, they still have to write up record books which keep accounting of their expenses and the money they make and, and all the things that they do during the year uh, so that they're like all the other projects so they're accountable for those type of projects. I think for a lot of kids, it it gives them a, a basis that they can build from, an appreciation of animals, appreciation of how to take care of animals, and uh, and you see a lot. Of, you'll see today even that a lot, there's a lot of mothers here that I can remember were young kids in 4-H, and what's happened is they've come through the program, they've gone and got married, moved away, and then now they've come back with their own children because they. And it doesn't matter whether it's horses or dogs, rabbits or goats or whatever, but I mean, they have an appreciation and a love for animals, so they, they, want to, they want their child to grow up and be able to understand how to take care of these animals properly, how to show them whether or not they want to go out 
forever and, and show their animals, at least they'll learn how to handle the animal correctly and the proper nutrition and how to take care of them. And a lot of, a lot of things we do with veterinarians, we, we get them exposed to the veterinarians so that they understand certain things to watch for and then if they have a problem they know who to go to, there's no mysteries there, they're not worried about who to call or anything else because they've already been exposed to a lot of that just on a learning level and so it really works out I think you know better for the animal even that the, the, the animals end up in a better environment for you know and are treated better and they're taken care of and they're appreciated and so it's just kind of a you might say win-win for the animal and the, and the child both. I, I have uh, several roles, but the main role that you see here today the, is uh, I am the chairman of the horse project for Kern County. In other words, I just, I'm, I'm the chairman. I oversee the, all the, the horse project and all the horse leaders uh, in Kern County and correlate and organize shows like this one today. We work our way all the way to the fair, and the fair, I, really I guess for most kids are you know is the is the big event we're there for three days with the horses and uh, and so a lot of the classes we have that you see today are the same or similar classes that we have at the fair it's just at the fair we have we actually there will be more horses there more riders because we involve the FFA group and the the independent in Grange they come in, you know, and compete with us. So it's a bigger, it's a bigger event. I think any, any parent that has a child that if they want them to learn and get involved with, and it doesn't matter what animal it is, really honestly, it doesn't, uh, but it's, it's something that, quite truthfully, it's more successful if the parent gets involved with the child. If a, if a parent, I mean if a child is going to go to these meetings and learn about the different animals, the, the more successful families at doing that are the ones that parents are involved for the parents. A lot of times parents don't know any more than the child does because they haven't been exposed to it. So it's a learning experience for the parent and the child and they go home with this and they can share and kind of bounce things off of each other. And then, but the main thing is that the child can't get to where they need to be without the parent. And that's the key to the whole thing and especially like the horse project because we have big animals here. You've got to have some kind of parent to be able to put the horse in a trailer and take him to where you have to go. And it's not always easy for some parents. I mean, it's, it is it's tough, but a lot of times other people will step up and they'll, they'll buddy up and one person will bring two or three horses with them. You know, and so it's just, uh, no, I would encourage any parent that has a child 
uh, that you think would not only just the animal projects, I mean, we do sewing, arts and craft, cooking, preserves, computer science, we do a lot of different things in 4-H, and uh, it, it, uh, I think would help any child develop a little more background and an understanding of the world around them, and uh, it just, I just think it's a neat deal, I really do. H offers various programs besides the traditional livestock events and just recently started a GPS tracking course for young patrons of the great outdoors. Just off Highway 14 in the east side of Kern County lays one of the most intriguing places in the entire United States, home of the first private spaceship to ever leave and return to Earth, the Mojave Airport. It's the awe-inspiring event of space travel that drives students and teachers to this airport to compete in their own rocket challenge. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, 21, 42. It, it all starts right here. And here they are, look at them. I just couldn't believe every year that they come out here with such incredible enthusiasm for rocketry. And you think and know that right there is a spark in a whole bunch of kids to do something that none of us old graybeards can even imagine right now. And that's what's really exciting about it. The purpose of the Intermediate Space Challenge is to get is to expose kids to possible career choices in math, engineering, and science. And it's to get them excited about it um, at a young age, uh, and especially for kids that might not be exposed to to technical you know technical things like building rockets and and the math that goes along with it. I think it looks like a, a wonderful forum to uh, light off the imaginations of these youngsters. Um, as, I've, uh, as I've said in the past, uh, this business of rocketry is uh, it's a lot of fun. The output is so easy to understand. You have a rocket, how high did it go, how much weight did it carry there? But it's the input that's the important part. demands that you understand the fundamentals of engineering and physics, of mathematics and chemistry and thermodynamics and aerodynamics and all these wonderful but difficult disciplines and it couches it in terms of fun and kids, they thrive on that and, and you got 700 of them right here behind me um, not, not realizing that they're absorbing uh, information and an education that's going to suit them whether they stay in engineering or they go on to other pursuits. These kids are learning triangulation and they're learning trigonometry and they're learning they're learning uh, state standards and they didn't even realize they were learning it and now uh, we've got some students that are thinking of getting into the teaching career. We never expected that and every time we turn a corner we hear something else we never expected. Uh, it's just it's, it's just been amazing. The students are actually placed into teams. We'll have a team for the essay writing, which is completely done on their part. With the design, the students come up with not only the mascot name, but also the colors as well. We have the engineering uh, department from the local high school helping us with the construction of the rocket and then we finish it with the paint and the fine touches and the decals and things like that. The banner I'm really proud of this year because every student had a part in that with making sure that their name and design was on it. And all of the artwork done for the banner was student done as well. 
We love this program. It brought not only my class together, but my partner class as well. And two other sixth grade class were also able to come together, work, show a lot of unity, which is something we've been trying to work on all year. And I think this is a great thing to have at the end of the year because it'll encompass all the teamwork we've been trying to instill throughout the year. The Mojave Airport is an ideal location for this and um, we actually, when we came up with this idea, we had to get permission from the Mojave School District, we had to get a yes from our superintendent and we also had to get the, you know, the airport to say yes they would do this and we just, it's an ideal location, we have a great staff and it's all put on by the staff, the maintenance crew and, uh, and the staff also here in our administrative offices. In the last four years, they're the ones that have actually designed the spreadsheets for the calculations. They've um, helped with the cert certificates that we give out. They are the judges. They are the coordinators. They help send out the notifications to schools with the invites. Um, Mojave Airport's done a lot. I've been worked on this thing for five and a half years, the Voyager around the world, and of all those things, those challenges that we found all around the world, that to come across the hills just south of, of here and look down at Edwards Air Force Base, the Muroc Dry Lake, and I looked down and I thought, this is aviation's holy ground. This is where Jaeger and Scott Crossfield, they chased the demons in the sky and all their test planes back in the 50s and 60s. And boy, if I didn't screw up this landing, history was gonna be made again. And I looked around at all those people that came out to see us, and I was absolutely flabbergasted. But the thing was that all this effort and all this vision and all this hard work, it really paid off. We're making astronauts here. We have built an airplane and flew it around the world. We built two airplanes that flew around the world in record flights. And uh, it's a lot of record, uh, a lot of different aviation records that were set and started from right here in Mojave. So if you have the freedom and the wide open spaces, and uh, somebody with the guts to try can't ever tell what's going to happen. Space entrepreneur Dick Rattan and the crew of Spaceship One are working on a new spaceship that will take travelers into the great beyond. If you're interested in finding out more on any of these segments or other departments within Kern County, you can go to our website at www.co.kern.ca.us. For myself, the crew, and all of KGov, we hope you've enjoyed this look inside Kern. <laughs>